Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to another FNAF news video. The topics for this video are very interesting, because some of them aren't really FNAF news, more of just cool information that I wanted to share. But yeah, let's not waste any more time, we're gonna start off with some voice acting news for possibly security breach, but again, it's hard to tell at this point. So if you're new, subscribe, smash the like button, and let's jump into it. So this news right here is apparently a exclusive scoop from Kane Carter on Twitter. He says, FNAF news, for the first time I actually have an exclusive scoop. I can confirm that Michelle Moss, which if you uh, forget is the voice actor actor for Ballora is voicing Roxanne Wolf, Roxy, but in what is considered to be a minor port. I'm still convinced this is for a Freddy in Space sequel. He follows it up with, I'll be keeping my source anonymous just in case, but I trust them 100%. Discuss amongst yourselves, is Scott hiring voices for a security breach? or a surprise Freddy in Space 3. Again, following it up, saying, also bear in mind that just because this is considered a minor part, it doesn't mean Roxanne is a small character in Security Breach. If this job is for Security Breach, because it might not be, then it's possible Roxanne just doesn't talk much, like Funtime Foxy or Valora in Sister Location. So apparently Roxanne has a minor role in whatever game that Michelle was cast for. Well, I don't think it's gonna be a Freddy in Space sequel, because it seems like Scott wants to do a Freddy in Space 3 with Darko, it seems like, but Darko already confirmed that he has no plans. I also don't hope that it's gonna be for Security Breach, because I would love to have the Rockstar, not the Rockstars, the Glamrocks, wouldn't be the first time I made that mistake. The Glamrocks talk quite a bit. I know some people don't like that because they're supposed to be creepy. Why are they talking to me so much? But I think it adds personality to the characters. So I really hope the characters talk at least, you know, pretty significantly. I would hate for them to be minor characters. So while I don't think it's for a Freddy in Space 3 game, I hope it's not Security Breach. I'm guessing it's probably going to be for some troll game that isn't. Uh, uh, Freddy in Space 3. As we all know, we're getting a gameplay trailer in March, which is one month before April Fool's Day, so I think Scott... I, I have a feeling Scott's probably gonna do something on that day. More news, Matt Ellis has been given the role of Beefy Brawler, a brand new role for an upcoming FNAF project next to Bulky Beefcake, Battle Chick, and Disappointed Boss. So, this is another example of possibly the troll game, because I feel like these names, especially Bulky Beefcake and Beefy Brawler, hopefully aren't for Security Breach, because what names are those? It seems like these characters are gonna be like, you know, big and, uh, and intimidating. It seems like, you know, Battle Chick, Beefy Brawler, Bulky Beefcake. So I feel like it might be some like troll fighting game, but again, that's not confirmed. That's just me thinking right now. Disappointed boss definitely is something that I see happening in Security Breach, but those other three characters, maybe Battle Chick. Maybe Battle Chick is like, again, some of the animatronics or just some bad butt, you know, female kicking animatronic bootay, like I mentioned last time. And then we have another voice actor, James Burkdahl, has been assigned the role Beefy Brawler. Wait a second, didn't we just talk about that role? Yes, we did, let's keep reading. Beefy Brawler has already been given a VA, so this is likely another situation where Scott has given an extra auditionee a new unseen role. And just to wrap up the voice acting section of the video, uh, Kane has provided a summary of all the voices we have so far. Conrad as Disappointed Boss. Matthew as Unknown, he auditioned for Disappointed Boss. Courtney as Battle Chick. Devin as Bulky Beefcake, Michelle as Roxy, aka Roxanne, she auditioned for Battle Chick, Matt as Beefy Brawler, and James as Unknown, even though he auditioned for Beefy Brawler. Moving on to a quick update on the Ultimate Edition of the Freddy Files, which releases in November. I don't know what's going on with this book. It's all over the place. First, it was the Freddy Files Updated Edition, then it was the Ultimate Guide to FNAF, and now it's called Ultimate Guide FNAF Media Tie-In. So it gives the assumption that it is in the universe of FNAF, some sort of guidebook for the Night Gods, which you may think is pretty similar to the survival logbook, aka the security logbook, um, and it is, <laughs> at least it seems like 
that's what they're going for here. Some sort of guide to all the FNAF games for the night guards to look through as they're, you know, doing their daily, nightly routine. I'm not gonna lie, I was looking forward to another Freddy Files as long as they didn't mess it up like they did last time, but it seems like this book is taking a brand new approach, dropping the Freddy Files title altogether, and now moving towards what appears to be, again, a in-universe, you know, in the FNAF universe style of guides to the i don't know man again it's weird because like we already had that with the log book but that was more of an activity book so is this going to be an actual guide i don't know it's so weird the approach that they're going with for this book now so i guess we're just gonna have to wait and find out what happens with that and now moving on to some sister location easter eggs which have been found over the past couple of days Keep in mind that these these mean nothing, okay? There's no lower significance. I know there's some people, um, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it right now, but the blue screen of death, right? Basically, you go into Blower Gallery, you press one and zero repeatedly or simultaneously, I believe. You wait a bit and then it comes up with this blue screen with a lot of flashing numbers going on. It's, it's for the game. It's for the source code of the game. It's for the programming of the game, all that stuff. It doesn't have any lore significance. Don't try to code it. It's all random numbers in the game's code. It means nothing. It's cool to see. You know, this game has been out for like five years now, and this is the first time we found out about something like this. And the person that found that also today um, put in the glass pressure audio for sister location to see what it would sound like if it was in the game if you don't know there's an unused audio in sister location that says like warning glass pressure trigger please do not push against the glass or something like that i'll play the clip right now glass pressure trigger please do not push against the glass glass pressure trigger please do not push against the glass Glass pressure trigger. Please do not push against the glass. Glass pressure trigger. Please do not push against the glass. Glass pressure trigger. And according to the data miner that found this, they say the following. Both sounds play every two seconds, but the chances are limited. For the first one, it has a 1 in 10 chance of being triggered. The second has a 1 in 5. This is meant to happen randomly. It's not caused by any input from the player. These clunking noises sound similar to the ones you hear in night one as you leave Circus Gallery. Through the vent, I believe it was Baby who was doing that. She's up against the glass and pounding against it, possibly foreshadowing that she wants out of CB. A oh, so Baby's Entertainment and Rentals early in the game. And then I go on to talk about why this was left out of the game possibly, uh, but the person that wrote this actually edited their post later on explaining why it's not in the game, so I'm gonna read that out right now. The first one with the lights on is meant to play when Baby tells her story, but you have to leave during it. However, you can't exit until she's done talking, making it impossible to trigger. The second one with the lights off is meant to play when not only the power is out, but at the script when hand unit first introduces you to Circus Gallery. That too is impossible to trigger in the game. So it seems like the reason why they're left out is just because the timing of when the audio is supposed to play doesn't align with the code of just the game in general and also other dialogue that plays at that time. So it is very interesting. Um, and I hope to see more stuff like this in the future because again, like, Sister Location is like five years old, and the fact that we're just learning about some of these Easter eggs is really cool. And finally, let's talk about Steel Wolf Studios' website being down. It seems like they just forgot to pay their domain name, which is kind of funny, actually. Though it is very concerning. Um, as funny as it was, you know, oh, Steel Wolf Studios, you forgot to, you know, pay to have your website be operational. It is concerning that they forgot to do that. Like, it seems like they should probably get some more help on their hands if they're forgetting to do stuff like forgetting to pay for their website. I don't know. I, I, I hope they're doing well over there. It seems like they have a lot in their plate, so hopefully they're not stressing out too much because that would suck but yeah that's everything a quick little update video mostly on voice acting situations as well as a few other one-off things whoa 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 slow your roll there people don't you dare go clicking off the video just yet first off 
Willy's Wonderland t-shirt. Can't wait to see the movie. I want to see if I can do a watch party on Twitch when it releases. I'll keep you updated on Twitter. Anyways, I'm breaking in here to talk about the brand new FNAF or email that got released today. It got released seven minutes ago. I was holding off posting this video today because I wanted to make sure that if we were getting an email because it was in the files but we didn't 100% know if it was happening, I wanted to hold off to see if we got one and we did. Shout out to my lad OP America with a Q thrown in there for some reason. You misspelled America bro. What are you doing? For supplying me with all this information leading up to the email's release along with a screenshot of the email. I really do appreciate it. Link down below. So this is the email very cryptic. Uh, unlike any emails we've gotten before, this one is very mysterious because it doesn't really give us a whole lot of clues. So the email is titled Hort Hort, you know, a little greater than three, greater than three, to us from unknown, as all the character emails are. It says, roses are red, violets are blue, is your front door unlocked? We're coming for you. Your friends are afraid and you should be too. Before you know it, we'll be right next to you. So I think the fact that that it constantly says where, you know, a plural, you know, like multiple characters. I think it, I think it's pretty safe to say it's Fun Time Freddy. I freaking hope it's Fun Time Freddy, dude. He's been teased for over a year now. Give it to us. He's also a fan favorite character and we already know that they are, you know, they like to do sister location characters. They've done Ape Ape Baby. They've recently done Ballora. He's already in the files. He's already been teased. Freaking give it to us, dude. I want Fun Time Freddy. I want Kellen to come back, get some new voice lines in there. I want to see what his mechanics gonna be like. Does it involve Bon Bon? Are they gonna be two separate characters? Is Bonnet gonna be thrown in there? I swear to God, if this is actually not Fun Time Freddy and it's someone else that no one gives a crap about, I'm gonna be upset. As far as I'm aware, we haven't had a situation where a skin has sent us an email. So, I think it's pretty safe to say this is a brand new character. We got one for Blower. I believe we got some for the Jacko characters. We got some for Frostbear. They've always been characters and Illumix, you better not let us down. Yeah, not staying here for too, too long. I hope it's someone good. If it's not Fun Time Freddy, I want someone good. I also hope they have a brand new unique mechanic because, I mean, the Jacko characters um, and Golden Freddy didn't really introduce anything new. Sure, with Golden Freddy, you could switch between the different CPUs, but they were the same CPUs as previous characters. Not really anything new. The last time we got a brand new mechanic was kind of from below with the Manorinas, but at the same time, it was kind of a reuse of Mangle, so I'm hoping for something different. They really need to introduce a good, good character that the community is hyped for to get people back into the game. They've been gone for a month, which doesn't seem like a long amount of time, but it is when you have been releasing updates for a full year, and then you stop. So if they want to get their community back, they got to release someone good. Someone who's hopefully fun time pretty. Yeah, so that's really it. Um, thanks for tuning into the video. Pretty late. Uh, this video is going to go up pretty late. Sorry about that. But I wanted to wait until this email got sent out so I could talk about it a bit. Uh, and now it has. So, Pog, we've reached the end of the video. Smash like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the flip side. Goodbye.